As military combat aircrafts that utilize air-to-ground weaponry to drop bombs and launch torpedoes, bomber jets need to be powerful. But the particular crafts featured in this vehicle may make the average bomber jet look like nothing by comparison. Because these are the 20 most powerful bomber jets in the world. Number 20. Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit I'm not going to start with some random bomber that you may or may not have heard of. Instead, I'm going right to the top to showcase one that was not only a game changer in warfare, but has also been used for decades by the United States because of how great that it is. This is the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit, which you've likely heard of as the B-2 Bomber. It's a stealth bomber that was made to invade enemy territory, go completely undetected, until the bombs began to drop and then leave before getting caught. During the earliest days of the bomber aircraft, being stealthy was impossible due to the invention of radar, and that's why they needed fighter escorts to help them get to the target location. But Northrop Grumman decided to take on that challenge and make a plane that could absorb enemy radar signals and ensure that it went stealthily into the target area and then be gone. To say that this was quite the challenge is an understatement. Not only did they have to figure out several issues to make it work, they had to do it all by themselves. By that I mean that they had to personally craft the materials they needed to get the B-2 Spirit to the level of stealth, speed, and survivability that they desired. That's right, they didn't only make it to be stealthy, they made it to withstand attacks on the off chance that it did get caught, and when you look at the shape of the B-2 Spirit, it was an innovation all on its own because no craft looked like it before, and very few look like it now. This bomber is a testament to the engineering spirit and desire to get something done right for the country. Currently, the B-2 is the only long-range penetrating stealth bomber in the United States arsenal that protects the nation's service members, nation and global allies. That might sound odd that it only has this craft, but when you have something that works and has been working for decades without fail, you don't really need to reinvent the wheel. You literally use it until the wheels fall off, and they have. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This photo was recently dumped online by a user who claims to work at a top-secret U.S. military facility. He says the craft in the image is a secret and development bomber jet that's not yet been revealed to the world, claiming that it's not just extremely fast, but also highly stealthy, meaning that it's borderline undetectable. Now, he might be full of lies. Sadly, it's kind of impossible to know what to trust online anymore. But if he's genuine, it's very exciting news. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag sweet topic. Number 19. The Rockwell B-1B Lancer I'm going to stick with the United States for this next bomber because they have a lot of bomber models to choose from. Not all of them are the stealthy ones like the B-2, but there are other reasons to have a variety of such craft. For example, the Rockwell B-1B Lancer that the Air Force uses is special because it's able to carry a massive payload of missiles and other armaments needed to do bombing strikes. In fact, it is the craft that has the largest payload of weapons of any craft in the Air Force currently, and equally as important, this payload can include both precision and non-precision armaments. What does that mean exactly? Well, precision ones are like the missiles that fighter craft use to try and directly hit their targets while non-precision ones are used to spray and prey on a target, uh, not unlike the original bomber aircraft. This is the bomber that the United States would use if it were trying to attack enemies in a hurry before they can get into a position to strike back, and it even has measures to find and target enemy radar systems and then quickly take them out. Even for its size, the Rockwell B-1B Lancer is revered for its speed in the air and the ability to maneuver without a whole lot of effort. Just as important is that the electronics aboard the vessel are so precise they can warn the onboard crew about new dangers and threats and then allow them to strike at those new threats nearly instantly. Then should an enemy craft get locked on, the bomber has multiple ways of staying alive until it can get out of the combat zone, which includes decoys, detection systems, and an overall toughness that makes it hard to bring down. It's fast, it endures, and it can literally drop the bomb on you before you ever realize that you're in danger. Number 18. 
the Tupolev Tu-160. We're going to head over to Russia now, who, unsurprisingly, not only has a bomber fleet of their own, but they happen to have the largest operational bomber in the entire world. Why is that not surprising? Well, because Russia loves to have the biggest of everything whenever possible, and they're clearly not compensating for anything. As I'm talking specifically about the Tupolev Tu-160, it was not the easiest aircraft to get done. They made it in the late 1970s, and then it took its first flight in 1981, and when they made a second one by 1987, they actually lost it. That did not stop them from continuing to build it, and in fact, they made dozens of them, because the government said they weren't going to keep making concepts. That actually hurt them in the long run, because this kind of craft was not the cheapest to make, nor the easiest to maintain. So they might have done better by making something smaller, but again, Russia doesn't like to do things small. What made the Tupolev Tu-160 a threat for so many, including during the days of the Cold War, would be its range. It had a range of over 12,000 kilometers. Now for context, that meant that, if the need should arise, it could actually reach the United States from Russia without having to worry about refueling. Now granted, it never did make that voyage, as much as we know, and you could argue that the US would have caught it on radar before it reached land, but the option was there. And plus, like the first bomber I mentioned, it was designed to cut through radar detection at both a high and a low level. Since its creation, the Tupolev Tu-160 has gone over many overhauls and upgrades to try and keep the line alive, which includes the Tupolev Tu-160M model, which was made in 2014. As of last count, only about 10 of them are left in Russia, and there's a debate as to how many of them are actually functional. Number 17. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress It took us a while, but now we're going to one of the more iconic bombers of the early era. In fact, you may recognize part of the name when I say that we're talking about the Boeing B-52 Stratofortress. No, it's not the classic World War II bomber that helped to change the game in more ways than one. This is one that began production after the war and had a good run of about 10 years before being phased out of production, though it is still in use today. What separates this Stratofortress from its more classic counterpart is simple, the jet engine. During the Second World War, the jet engine was developed by German forces and were even in use at the time near the end of the Battle of Europe. But after the Germans fell, the United States and other countries then took the technology for themselves and began adapting it into their own aircraft, which obviously sparked an aviation revolution of its own. The Boeing B-52 Stratofortress was one such example of that, with a bomber now being able to go subsonic thanks to a set of powerful jet engines, the range of the bomber increased dramatically. And for bombers, the farther they can go, the more they can do to the enemy. If that's not enough for you, thanks to it being produced within the 1950s, this craft was designed not only as a payload dropper, but to house nuclear weapons as a deterrent. Yes, this was a craft that would have literally dropped the bomb on Russia during the Cold War if it had been asked to, or at the very least, let them know that a bomb was coming to their doorstep. How many could it hold at once? Well, later variants could hold up to 20 at a time, and that makes for a whole lot of destruction. As noted before, they're still in use today because of their range and abilities, and have been upgraded with the times to ensure they meet the standards of war that we now face. As of yet, they've not dropped a nuclear bomb, and we should be grateful for that. Number 16. The Sukhoi Su-34 Back to Russia we go. It's almost as if the United States and Russia have had multiple needs for big and powerful bombers over the years. Can't really imagine why. It was called the Cold War. And guess what? The Sukhoi Su-34 was a Soviet-made bomber from that era. It would be conceived in the 1990s before the Soviet Union had fallen, and you may look at this craft and say, well, wait a minute, that doesn't exactly look like the other fighters that we've seen so far. It looks more like a jet, and you would be right on that front. While the typical kind of bomber is a big plane that can carry a huge payload, jets and other airplanes over the years have been converted into bombers for single-strike attacks and missions. They're referred to as mid-range bombers, 
because they can go a good distance but not as far as bombers. Equally as important, the mid-range bombers like the Sukhoi Su-34 can stand up to enemy craft much more easily as they were built for dogfights. The Su-34 was designed primarily for tactical deployment against ground and naval targets, regardless of the time of day, and they would be sent in for precise strikes and then get out before they could be shot down. They could also handle areas with anti-aircraft weaponry and special electronic disruptors, or if they simply needed a plane to get to a certain location to scout things out, this one would more than do the job. The irony is that despite it being made in the 90s, the first batch of aircraft of this line would not be delivered until 2004. It was deemed to be successful enough to get another couple dozen ordered for the 2010s when they were officially put into the Russian Air Force. They're still being used today and are slated for even further upgrades. Number 15. The Xi'an H-6 Now, being honest, you don't really tend to hear a whole lot about the Chinese Air Force and the craft that they have. On the one hand, they haven't been in as many global conflicts as other nations like England, the United States and Russia, but on the other hand, they have their fingers in a lot of pies regarding keeping the peace while trying to dominate in other fields. So they need a strong military to back it up. That includes having the ability to bomb people when the time comes, and this is one example of them being ready for that. But this is where the ironic twist also comes into play. Whereas the United States is always adapting and upgrading their aircraft or coming up with new ones, and Russia is overhauling their fleet, China isn't actually doing that with their fleet, but instead they've been using a production copy of a Russian model. That's right, they took a variation of the Tupolev Tu-16 and then they converted it over to their standards and needs. Many even noted that while there are 231 of them around, as of 2020, they're still the old bomber that they had when they first brought the craft from Russia. Who used this craft in the 1950s? Yep, that's an old bomber right there for sure. Now obviously, China did take the time and effort to upgrade their craft at points, which included giving them in-air refueling capabilities and more, but that still puts them in third place in the bomber fleet ranks between the nations that I've talked about. So, are they a threat today? Well, yeah, absolutely. As I've already shown you, some craft from the 1950s are still operational, and if it works, there's actually no need to fix it. Plus, even the United States Department of Defense would admit that these bombers give China a long-range strike ability that cannot be ignored. Number 14. The Mikoyan MiG-31 I'm going to shift tactics a bit on this one and look at not a bomber, but one of the aircraft that was created to try and take out a bomber should they ever come into Russian airspace, or to defend their own bombers should they need them for a strike mission. The Mikoyan MiG-31 is an interceptor fighter jet made back during the 1970s. The twist is that this craft claims to be the fastest operational combat aircraft in the world. Whether it is or not, well, that's up for debate especially given some of the fighter jets the United States has. But regardless, this has been in the Russian Air Force ever since its construction, and that's let it be a dominant presence within their ranks. But the interceptor part of its function wasn't just about intercepting aircraft, it was about intercepting their missiles and taking them out before they hit their targets. That's right, this jet could catch up to cruise missiles and shoot them down. They're also what would go after UAVs, helicopters, and yes, bombers. That's why even today there are protection details for bombers, because craft like this exist solely to take them down. Number 13. Boeing B-29 Super Fortress In fact, this was a classic bomber that you likely have seen in various World War II biopics and documentaries, and I haven't even gotten to its big accomplishment yet. One of the largest aircraft of the Second World War, the B-29 would be designed with state-of-the-art technology, which included a pressurized cabin, dual-wheeled tricycle landing gear, and an analog computer-controlled fire system that allowed one gunner and a fire control officer to direct four remote machine gun turrets. The bomber wasn't only advanced for its time, it could also do high-altitude and low-altitude missions and would be used in both the war in Europe and in Japan. Can you guess what I'm about to say now? 
The accomplishment that the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress had to set its place in history is that this was the plane that dropped not one, but two atomic bombs on Japan at the end of the Second World War. This is the only aircraft to have ever done so in history. Now, that may be quite the heavy burden, but it was the final blow to end a long, long conflict, and thankfully, no such craft has had to do it again, even though they're equipped to do so if they may be asked. Thanks to the success of the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress, Boeing made many aircraft for the military and other parties, including the ones I've already mentioned. Number 12. The Tupolev Tu-22M This next one is a little bit hilarious because the Tupolev Tu-22M honestly doesn't exist in the way that you may be thinking. As it's actually not an upgraded model of the Tupolev Tu-22, it doesn't even look like it in many ways. So why is it being talked about? Well, because it does exist thanks to trickery. During the time of the Soviet Union, the government decided that it did not want to make more bombers. Instead, it wanted to make more intercontinental ballistic missiles to do the damage to their enemies, like the United States, and then they focused on that. The Tupolev crew were not happy with that, so they decided to create a story that they were just wanting to upgrade the Tu-22 model of craft that the Air Force had been using. And surely enough, they got the funds to do so, and they made the Tupolev Tu-22M, even though it wasn't like the base model. To its credit though, it did get the job of being a bomber done, and they are still in use in decent numbers in the 2020s. So you could say, it's one that shouldn't exist, but Russia is likely glad that they have it. Number 11. The North American XB-70 Valkyrie so far, I've shown you plenty of bombers that do exist in our world right now, and could be used if asked, but it should also be noted that the various nations who have bombers have experimented with them over the years, and the North American XB-70 Valkyrie is an excellent example of that. This was an experimental bomber that would be developed by the Air Force to not only be the largest bomber in the world, but have insane speeds that bombers had not even come close to in the past. Now, surely enough, they made it work, it was not only fast, but it could actually outpace the various interceptor aircraft that were meant to come after it. Even when surface-to-air missiles were developed, the craft could beat them at low altitudes. So why is this one not in the Air Force today? Well, it is simple. It became obsolete. ICBMs made it irrelevant since they could fire missiles with nuclear payloads at precise locations instead of having to risk a craft and its crew to get there and just simply hope that it reached the target. It also didn't help that it was very expensive to make, and there were cheaper ways to drop bombs. Who knew? Number 10. Avro Vulcan It may have taken half the list, but here we have another country who has bombers, that being the United Kingdom. Given their status in the world wars and beyond, it's not surprising they had a craft like the Avro Vulcan to help them with bombing missions. While it may be retired today, it was once a loyal part of the Royal Air Force for around 30 years, and not surprisingly, due to it being developed in the 1950s, it was a craft that was designed to help with dropping nuclear payloads or deterring enemy craft who may have some on board. Curiously, the craft was not meant to defend itself in a fight, but instead, it was meant to evade enemy craft so that it wouldn't be hit in the first place. Number 9. Henley Page Victor The Henley Page Victor is another retired United Kingdom craft, but this one served for about four decades before getting clipped. Originally, it would be designed to be a nuclear deterrent-style craft. However, issues within the craft's body, mixed in with the arrival of nuclear missiles and better deployment options, made it get relegated to more of a recon bomber than anything else. It was also used as a tanker to help with refueling missions, if you can even believe it, and it was the last of the V-bombers to be retired in England, showing that the country did appreciate the craft and used it as long as they could. 
To be clear, it could carry quite a payload of fuel, I'm talking over 40,000 kilograms worth of it, but in the end, that just wasn't enough to keep it afloat, metaphorically speaking. Number 8. The Tupolev Tu-95 Here we are again in Russia, but instead of weighing you down with statistics and such, I'm going to tell you a story that's associated with the Tupolev Tu-95. Specifically, you remember that US B-29 bomber that dropped the atomic bombs on Japan? I mentioned that it was the only craft to do this, and that was correct, regarding dropping a bomb on a country. But tests with bombers still took place afterwards, and the Tupolev Tu-95 was the craft that dropped the biggest nuclear bomb in history into the ocean, the Tsar Bomba. Due to the nature of this bomb and how powerful that it was, they had to outfit the craft to survive, or at the very least, try to survive. They didn't know if it would actually get out of range in time. It did, but the shockwave of the bomb was able to traverse nearly 40 kilometers of distance in only seconds, and you can bet that their air crew was nervous for that mission. Number 7. The Vickers Valiant Now, I mentioned the V-Bomber line in the last entry, and this was actually one that helped to start the trend. The Vickers Valiant was the first operational V-Bomber that the United Kingdom had made, and yes, it was also meant to be a nuclear payload dropper or deterrent craft. In fact, it did test runs doing just that. It was used in combat and actual conflicts. From 1956 up until early 1966, the main Valiant force was used in the nuclear deterrence role in the confrontations between NATO and the Warsaw Pact powers. That eventually led to the arrival of surface-to-air missiles, and then when the Valiant was found to have structural issues, just like the other V-bombers, it was decided by the defense minister to be retired. Number 6. The Dassault Mirage 2000 Series Can you guess what nation this craft belongs to? Well, that would be France. Yes, we have another new country on the list, and arguably one you may not have expected to see. This was built in the 1980s, and the 2000D model is actually still in use by the country today. You can say that it was made for dropping nuclear arsenals, or even being a deterrent for them. You may be seeing a pattern here. It honestly shouldn't be that much of a surprise, as the arrival of nuclear weapons had changed the face of warfare, and the Dassault Mirage models were another response to that, and able to ensure that they would not be caught off guard. While it's meant to drop the bombs, it can actually take care of itself in the air as well, including having chaff systems to stop missiles, jamming systems to stop locks on computers and radar, and so very much more. Number 5. The Avro Lancaster Now we'll be diving back into the Second World War and showing you what the British had to try and stave off the Axis powers. The Avro Lancaster would be put to use quite a bit in the 1940s after it had been developed. And what made it special was that it was a plane specifically designed to handle the biggest bombs that the UK could get their hands on during the period. These were known as blockbusters, and they could be over 5,000 kilograms in weight. The Lancaster stands as an iconic symbol of British aviation history and wartime heroism. It was developed to play a pivotal role in the Allied air campaign against Nazi Germany, and with its distinctive twin-engine design and sleek aerodynamics, it boasted impressive performance while expressing formidable power. It could go up to 287 miles per hour and carry a maximum bomb load of 22,000 pounds, accommodating a crew of around seven, which included a pilot, a flight engineer, a navigator, the bomb's aimer, the wireless operator, and two gunners. One of its most celebrated missions was during the raid on Ruhr Dams in May of 1943, immortalized as the Dam Busters Raid. Flying at a low altitude under intense enemy fire, Lancasters of Royal Air Force No. 617 Squadron successfully breached several dams, causing catastrophic flooding while disrupting German war production. These planes were used to bomb various German targets over the conflict, which included being the perfect bomber to use at night to get in and surprise the enemy. They were used during the daytime and were found to be accurate in their payload deployment. Number 4. Consolidated B-24 Liberator 
Sticking with the Second World War, we now go back across the pond to see what else the United States had in its arsenal at the time. The consolidated B-24 Liberator was a special craft due to its wing design, and it allowed the craft to fly long distances while also having the ability to carry a heavy payload, which was vital in that period of war. A certain general loved it so much, despite certain control issues, that they were actually mass-produced. It is in fact the most produced heavy bomber, multi-engine aircraft, and military aircraft history. And that's part of the reason that it's been used in many other branches of the military all across the world, right up until the 1960s, when the last one would finally be retired. Number 3. The Douglas A-20 Havoc Once more into the Second World War we go, but this time we have another fighter aircraft that was doubled as a bomber. In this case, however, this was a light bomber, and as such it was never going to be able to drop the biggest payloads, but it could get the job done when it was asked to. The Douglas A-20 Havoc was actually first designed for the French, and then the United States realized that it could be of great assistance to them with their army forces, and they built one for themselves. When France was captured by the Axis powers, the ones that were left went to the UK to serve them until France could be liberated. It was designed for all kinds of missions which included infiltration, night strikes, recon, and more. Number 2. Junkers JU-88 One last new country to reveal, this one we've talked about quite a bit. That would be Germany. During World War II, they had plenty of bombers they used to attack enemy nations, especially those of the British, and the reason that the Junkers Ju-88 is so special is it was designed to outrun the interceptor craft that were around in the 30s and 40s, thus giving it the designation of being a fast bomber. While it did have issues at first, the Germans worked them out and their air force became almost immeasurably stronger thanks to its abilities and versatility. They even used it as a literal flying bomb as a last resort to try and do massive damage to the Allies. And if you're still not sure how good it was, well, it's the second most produced bomber and aircraft in history, and it just goes to show that Germany really loved this craft. Number 1. The Boeing B-47 Stratojet Boeing is back and it's here to send everything out with a bang, because the Boeing B-47 Stratojet was built with one purpose, to drop a nuclear bomb on Russia. It was first manufactured in 1951 when the Cold War was in full effect, and the United States wanted a recon bomber that could head to the USSR and drop a massive payload should the war turn hot. It was another of the first bombers to use a jet engine, and it gave it much more impressive range. Thanks to the turbulent times, over 2,000 of them were manufactured, which meant that this is one of the biggest parts of the U.S. bomber fleet during that period. While it never dropped bombs on enemy nations, it was outfitted for several kinds of recon missions and was used to make different bombers down the line. That's all from the realm of bomber planes and the ones that have gone above and beyond the call of duty to do what their nations needed of them. Were you amazed by these planes? And which ones did the most damage in their prime? Which ones did you like the best? And perhaps there's another one that should have been on this list. Let me know all about it in the comments section down below, check out the other cool things on the screen, and I will see you next time.